Hi, boys and girls. My name is Buddy Davis. Welcome to the workshop today. Can you guess what we're going to be talking about today? <laughs> well, we're going to be talking about dragons, and we're going to fit them into the biblical framework. So we have a lot of ground to cover, so we better get started. I call this Here There Be Dragons is what I named this workshop. And you know, uh, a lot of people say dragons were not real. They were just mythical creatures made up in the minds of men. But I think dragons were real, but I don't think they look quite like what this picture right here looks like. No wonder people would think they're not real when you think of things like this. I wouldn't ever expect to find anything that looks quite like that, would you? But you know what? I think dragons were real. And here's why. Because dragon legends are found all over the world. How did so many people from all over the world have legends about these creatures today that we call dragons unless they or their ancestors would have seen some of these creatures? And did you know this, that people used to write books on dragons in painstaking detail? They believed what they were writing and pictures that they were drawing of dragons were real creatures. And I think they were too. And then the Bible talks about dragons. In fact, over 20 times it mentions the word dragons. Hey, does God lie? Of course not. So there had to be some type of creature, even back in biblical days, that they would have called dragons. So how would you define a dragon? How would a dragon be defined? Well, a dragon is a reptile. Dragons are reptiles. What are dragons? They're reptiles. That's right. Dragons are reptiles. And uh, when we talk about dragons, we're painting with a broad brush. It's not just dinosaurs alone, when we're speaking of dinosaurs, how that's connected, because it is connected. But dragons could be uh, uh, anything from a, a dinosaur to a pterodactyl, which pterodactyls are not dinosaurs. Did you know that? Even though you see pterodactyls, that's these flying creatures that fly around. Uh, you see them in, 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 uh, in dinosaur books and movies. Technically, they're not dinosaurs. They, they were flyers. Dinosaurs lived on the land. And dinosaurs are, are not plesiosaurs either. So dinosaurs lived on the land. But here's my point. When we're talking about dragons, what did I say a dragon was? A reptile. What are all these guys? They're reptiles. So we're painting with a broad brush. Dragons fit into uh, what we call reptiles today. So we have different types of reptiles, and some of these creatures could be dragons, such as dinosaurs, pterodactyls, and plesiosaurs. Does that make any sense? <laughs> well, hopefully it does as we continue with this workshop. So let's keep on going. Today we're going to talk about dragons that would live on the land. Okay? We're going to talk about dragons that would swim in the water. And we're going to talk about flying dragons that would fly in the air. So I'm going to start off with dragons of the air. Look at this. Boy, isn't that cool? I love this picture. I'm going to say it again. I'd like to say it one more time. Oh, I just love that picture. Flying dragons. That's what we're going to be talking about. And look here in this old history book right here. What's that date say right up the top? 793 A.D. in England. And what's it talk about? talks about dragons flying. All right. And look at here. This is good. I love this one right here. This is in the Bible. This is in the book of Isaiah in Isaiah 36, it talks about a flying serpent, and a serpent is a reptile, okay? So you see how we're starting to connect the dots here, what some of these dragons could be. Now, in the movies that you go and watch, they make the dragons look like this right here, and that makes a good, exciting movie, I gotta admit, that's, that's a pretty cool-looking critter that's flying. But I don't quite think that's what the real flying dragons were based on. Here's what I believe that the flying dragons would have been. It's creatures that we call pterodactyls today. Oh, some of these pterodactyls got to be big. They did. They, they, they would have a wingspan of almost 20 feet. Can you imagine that? 20 feet. That's a pretty big flying reptile, is it not? Now, I believe these creatures live right along with people, and I am convinced that there's where the legends of the flying dragons would come from. Now, if I'd be living back when these creatures would, would still be alive, and let's say it's let, let's say that uh, we're in the, maybe the uh, late uh, 14 or 1600s or so, and I'd be out hunting squirrels, and I'd be backed up against a big old tree, and something, I hear it flapping its wings, and I look up, and something like that would fly over my head with a 20-foot wingspan. Mercy! I'd probably run back to the village as fast as I could go, and I'd tell everybody, you're not going to believe what I just saw. I just saw a flying dragon. I wouldn't call it a pterodactyl, would I? There's a good reason why I wouldn't call it a pterodactyl, because the word pterodactyl wasn't even invented yet. 
but I'd probably call a creature like that a flying dragon. Now, some of them even got to be bigger. The one I just showed you, that pteranodon, had a wingspan of, what did I say, about 20 feet? Look at this one right here, the wingspan the size of an airplane. Mercy, that is a big flying critter. Uh, almost 40 feet, uh, the scientists believe this creature's wingspan would have been, called Quetzalcoatlus. Guess where they found it? They found it in Texas. Hey, you expect it to be big in Texas, right? So that there's, that there's one of the flying dragons, and I'm convinced that the flying dragons are what we... Uh, are what we call pterodactyls today. Is there any reason to believe that people have seen these creatures? And yes, there is. This is a pictograph. This is what the Indians would draw on canyon walls. And I believe this is a picture of a pterodactyl. Let me, let me outline it for you a little bit so you can see it a little bit clearer. Here we got it outlined. Now, if the Indians wanted us to believe that this would be a bird, they'd probably put feathers on it. The reason I say that, because when they draw birds they usually put feathers on it. This looks like it would have leathery type wings. And it even has a crest on its head. And did you know that a lot of pterodactyls had crests on their head? And it, it, it depends on the species of pterodactyl as to what that crest would be shaped like. Let me show you right here. Here's a pterodactyl. This is a pteranodon. This is not a real big pteranodon, but he'd have about a 15 foot wingspan. But what's on its head? A bony crest. Scientists are not quite sure what these crests were used for, but they think it just helped it to, uh, to identify its own species. I don't know for sure, but that's what they think. But it depends on the species as to what that crest would look like. This species right here has kind of a, a smaller crest that would be on its head, but it certainly does look like a pterodactyl. And then in this very same area where they have found this, and I've been to this site myself, I've seen it with my own eyes. Uh, you guess what else you find? You find skeletons of pterodactyls in this area, some of the fossilized bones of pterodactyls. So the flying dragons, wow, I'm convinced that the flying dragons connect very well with what we call pterodactyls. Now let's talk about the land dragons, the ones that would live on the land. Hey, could some dinosaurs have been called dragons? What do you all think? Well, yeah, I think they could be. Uh, before the word dinosaur was invented, Many, many years ago, when they start to find the bones of these creatures we call dinosaurs today, what do you suppose they called them years ago when they'd find the bones? You're right, they called them dragons. They called them dragon bones. Why didn't they call them dinosaurs? That's easy. The word dinosaur wasn't invented yet. Just like the word pterodactyl is a brand new word, the word dinosaur is a brand new word too, invented by, do you remember what I said? Sir Richard Owen, and when did he invent that word? 1841. Yep, you got it. I give you an A on that one, okay? And by the way, you got to remember everything I'm saying because I'm going to give you a test on the end of this. I got your attention now. I'm not going to give you a test. I'm just, I'm just teasing you guys. We're having fun here. But uh, the dragon legends uh, fit in very well with what we call dinosaurs today on some of these skeletons. This is from an old history book. Look at that. What's that year say right up the top? Say it with me. 1405. And I'm just going to read some of the things that this old history book would talk about this creature. I think it fits the description of a dragon. And they're talking dragons. And, uh, and it fits what we would call a dinosaur today. And one of the things that it says in this old, old, old history book, it says that the dragon was vast in body. Big, big body. So I put a picture up here of one of the large dinosaurs. This is a sauropod dinosaur's. Boys and girls like to call these guys the long-necked dinosaurs, and they certainly had long necks. But some of these guys got to be giants. Some of them get to be 85 feet long and even longer, and some of them almost 100 feet long. In fact, some of them are over 100 feet long. So it's saying in this old history book, look at the date again, 1405, and they're talking about a dragon that's vast in body. But it goes on. What else does it say? Oh, it says that the dragon had teeth like a saw. Teeth like a saw. So I put a picture up here. This is the teeth of Tyrannosaurus rex. And right here is a T-Rex skeleton uh, 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 skull right in front of me. But teeth like a saw. So you can see what I did in this picture. It's very obvious what I did. Before you guys got in here today, I walked up to this picture right here. And I, I just went up. And you can see what I did. I yanked the tooth right out of it just so I could show you the tooth. You buy that? <laughs> no. I'm just teasing you guys, but this is, this is a casting off of a real Tyrannosaurus Rex tooth, 
and it says it had teeth like a saw. And if you could look real close on the edge right here, you could see that the teeth are certainly like a saw. Let me blow this picture up just a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. Remember, said this old history book said the dragon's vast in body, teeth like a saw. So here we go. There you go. See that? Is that cool or what? Look at these edges. And this old history book says that the dragon had teeth like a saw. T-Rex had teeth like a saw. And uh, let me show you one that we found on our dinosaur dig just last year. And our team found this, and we found this in eastern Montana. And check out this picture right here. Here we go. Looky there. It's just the very tip of a T-Rex tooth, teeth like a saw. Is that cool or what? Man, I like to, I like to go out and I dig up bones of dinosaurs because you never what, know what you're going to find. And boy, were we excited. Everybody said, hey, come here. Look what we found. And everybody gathered around, and we were so excited when we found, <laughs> we, we found this fossilized tooth of a Tyrannosaurus rex. Just the tip of it, but it's a pretty cool find. Well, now, this old history book goes on to say that the dragon had crest on its head, vast in body, teeth like a saw, said that the dragon had crest on its head. Look here, a lot of dinosaurs had crest on their head. Think of Triceratops, what was on its head, big old crest. Well, this old history book, talking years ago, said that uh, the dragon had crest on its head. So I put up a group of dinosaurs right here. These are all hadasaur dinosaurs. They're hadasaur dinosaurs. These are hadasaur dinosaurs. What kind of dinosaurs are these? Hadasaur dinosaurs. So there's different types of, of hadasaur dinosaurs. They belong to the, to the same species. You know, the Bible talks about the kinds, right? Remember that? God created the different kinds. And kinds is what modern-day scientists would call the family today. So you can have different species within the family, different species, but everything stays within its own kind, just like the Word of God says. But look at the crest on their head. They're all different, just like the crest on the heads of the pterodactyls were different. The crest on the heads of, of these, sar, or these hadasaur dinosaurs had crest on their heads. See this one right here? Look at this one right here. They're the very same. This is Parasaurolophus, and I'm going to walk over here. I'm going to talk about this dinosaur, the crest that's on its head for just a while. And scientists, uh, they thought, well, wonder, wonder why it would have crest on its head. What would that crest possibly ever be used for? And so they come up with different theories, and some scientists said, well, we're going to check and see what that crest looks like on the inside. So you know what they did? They took a saw on the fossil of a dinosaur like this here, on a real fossil, and they, they cut the skull in two. And when they cut it in two, they found that it had holes, uh, like tubes, on the inside of it. And some of the scientists thought, hmm, now what would that be used for? Oh, I got an idea, they thought. Maybe, maybe it had scent cells in it, so it could smell really good. So it could smell. Yep. Oh, maybe, because an elephant has a big, long trunk, and what's in its, what's in its nose? A bunch of scent cells. In fact, did you, did you know that an elephant has one of the best-smelling noses of any animal that's alive today? I think a polar bear is, is said to be number one, but the elephant comes in number two. So that's what they thought. Just a theory. Nobody ever seen for sure to know what it would be used for. So it was a theory. Other scientists say, well, we're not so sure about it being full of scent cells. You know, you know what we think it was, was used for? Since it had these, uh, these, these tubes in its head, I think that it was used to make a sound so it could communicate with other members of the herd. So look at this big old head right here. So it could, be, it could be a long ways from maybe another dinosaur want to communicate with it. So what would it do? Go, womp, 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 calling to other members of the herd. Other scientists say, well, that's, that's a good theory. That's a good theory. Nah, we don't think that's what it was either. You know what we think it was used for? We think it was used to breathe fire. Now, wait a minute, Buddy Davis, somebody might say. Now, come on, Mr. Davis, you certainly don't think there's such a thing as fire-breathing dragons, do you? Yes, I do, and we're going to talk about the fire-breathing dragons in this short talk. So let's go right back over here, and we'll continue our talk on dragons. Here we go. Well, this old history book, we're not done yet. It said that the dragon, it also had a tail of enormous length. So the dragon's vast in body, teeth like a saw, crest on its head, Man, we're, we're sounding like a dinosaur to me. And it said it had a tail of enormous length. 
Well, look here. In the Bible, in Job chapter 40, verse 15, Job chapter 40, verse 15, Job chapter 40, verse 15, what did I say? Look it up. Job chapter 40, verse 15, it talks about a creature called behemoth. Behemoth. What's its name? Behemoth. And a lot of scientists believe that behemoth could be what we call a dinosaur. Well, right there in the Bible, I think it's God communicating with his servant Job because Job knew this animal and God is telling Job about this creature called behemoth and it fits a description of what we call a dinosaur. Tail of enormous length. I'm not going to read everything here to you, but it says it has a tail of enormous length. You can, you can look it up yourself. Now, some scientists say, ah, oh, can't, can't be a dinosaur. You know what we think? We, we think that it's probably an elephant. Uh, and some say it's probably a hippopotamus. Uh, come on, give me a break. Do they have a tail like a cedar tree? <laughs> Mercy, no. Maybe a little flap of skin like a switch or a fly swatter. But you know what? A dinosaur has a tail of enormous length. I think God's telling Job about a creature like this. Well, according to the evolutionists, humans never saw a creature like this because according to the evolutionists, suppose it died out 65 million years ago, even longer than that. But here in the Bible, it talks about this creature. So who are we going to trust first? Are we going to trust what the scientists say that don't know everything, that haven't always been there? Do we trust God who's always been there and, and his word never changes? I trust the word of God. And some of the things that God's telling Job about this creature fits the pattern of an animal like this because God's telling Job, he says, Job, this creature has bones like bars of iron. And he says, uh, Job, this creature that I made has a tremendous stomach. And God's telling Job, Job, this creature I made has a tail like a cedar tree. Some dinosaur tails would weigh several tons just in itself. I guarantee you an elephant's tail don't weigh tons. And, 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 and then God's telling Job, Job, this creature that I made is chief in the ways of God. Chief in the ways of God means that this creature is the boss of the animals. He's a big boy. Well, a great big African bull elephant weighs about seven tons. That'd be a big one. Most of them don't get to be that big. So that'd be a big elephant. These guys would weigh 30 tons. Mercy should be hands down. Which one fits the description best? Fits the description of what we call a big old sauropod dinosaur. All right, that's right in the Bible. You got to read that. Job chapter 40, starting with verse 15. Well, now let's talk about the swimming dragons, the ones that would be in the water. And for years, sailors used to say that they would see swimming dragons in the water. In fact, they'd even write about this in their logbook. The captains would. Unlikely that the captains be lying. And here's why. Because in some of these countries, back in those days, if a captain would be found lying, he could be in a lot of trouble. So they wouldn't go to all that trouble. I believe that they were seeing real creatures. So I wonder what they were seeing that they called the swimming dragons. I don't know because I didn't see it either. But here's what I suspect. They were probably seeing what we call plesiosaurs. Now, some plesiosaurs got to be huge. Like these guys right here get to be 66 feet long. Mercy, that's a big reptile, all right? Could be like a chronosaur. These guys got to be huge as well. Look at these people standing by the fossil of a chronosaur. How'd you like to go swimming and see this guy come up and back of you? You talk about paddling quick. I'd look like a motorboat going through the water. If I seen something like this, boom, I'd be going. I'd leave a wake way behind me. He'd have a hard time catching me. I think that's what people were seeing, though, what we call, uh, th th these are swimming-type monsters that they used to call the, the, the sea dragons. Now, let's talk about the fire-breathing dragons. Now, come on, Mr. Davis. You, you, you give us a tease about that a little while ago, but uh, you really don't believe such a thing as fire-breathing dragons. Everybody knows that's not real. I think that it's real. And here's one of the main reasons why, because in the Bible, in God's Word, in Job chapter 41, just got to go to the next chapter, we're talking about Job, and it talks about Leviathan. And what can Leviathan do? Oh, he's pretty amazing. Look what the Bible says. This is what God's Word tells us, that Leviathan, it says, fire would leap out and smoke would go out of his nostrils. All right, does God lie? 
Oh, Mr. Davis, yeah, I know it says that, but it's got to be allegorical. That's got, that's, got to mean, uh, that's got to mean something else other than what it's saying. There's got to be a hidden meaning there because we know there's no such thing as fire-breathing dragons. Well, God's Word tells us in 1 Peter 3.15 to be able to defend our faith, to give a reason for the hope that is placed within us, and I believe we can do that. And, uh, and here's one of the ways that we can do that because we'll look at this little creature that is alive today. This is called the bombardier beetle. It's called the bombardier beetle. What's it called? The bombardier beetle, and he is alive today. All right, what's amazing about this little bombardier beetle, he lives in South America, he lives in Central America, parts of the southern part of the United States, but you know what? He has two chambers right back here. He does, and he, and he mixes gases in these chambers. He has an inhibitor right down here in his tail, and he shoots his hot, fiery gas. That's what he's doing right here at spiders, toads, snakes, Anything that wants to eat the bombardier beetle is going to have a hot lunch, that's for sure, because it's a hot 212 degrees that he's spraying out here, burns spiders, toads, snakes, anything that wants to eat the bombardier beetle, he has made a bad mistake. I wanted to show you one because a, a, a picture's worth a thousand words, they say, so I'm going to show you, oh, he's a big hungry spider, big spider, going to try to eat that little tiny bombardier beetle. But I want to, you to watch and see what happens to that spider. This happens very quickly. I put it on three different times so you can see. If you watch real close, you're even going to see the smoke. So here we go. Let's watch this. There's the big spider. There's the beetle. Watch. Boom. 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 I have pictures of that spider right after that. And he's not doing very good at all. I think he learned his lesson big time. But here's my point. If God can show us a little insect that can use chemicals to do this, why couldn't he do something equally amazing And a dinosaur like this one here that we were just talking about or another dinosaur over here, and he has a chamber in his head as well, and why couldn't they have a gas that would be in there that they could ignite just like the bombardier beetle? If the bombardier beetle can do this, why couldn't these guys do that too? And thus we get the legends of the fire-breathing dragon. Now, I am not saying, please understand me, I'm not saying that I think that every dinosaur went around breathing fire. I don't think they did, but I think some could. It's just like not, not every insect can light up like a lightning bug, but the firefly sure can. It's pretty amazing. Not every eel can produce electricity, but there's one eel that can. It's called the electric eel. And, and so not every, I don't believe every reptile or every dinosaur went around breathing fire, but I believe some could and they would belch out a fire just like this right here, and thus we get the legends of the fire-breathing dragons based on creatures that once lived and once inhabited this earth. So what happened to the dragons then? How come we don't have any dragons around with us today? Well, everything that was not on Noah's ark, if they weren't on ark, what happened to them? They drowned. That's right, they drowned. Now, the ones that survived for a little while became known as the dragons, the ones that got off the ark, because everything not on the ark drowned, but the ones that got off the ark after the flood was over, they were reptiles, and eventually they became known as dragons. All right? And so let's go here. Could there be a living dragon today? What do you all think? Is it possible? Sure is. And uh, I want to show you a living dragon that's around today. First of all, did I say that all dragons were dinosaurs? Did I say that? No. Did I say they were pterodactyls? No. Did I say they're all plesiosaurs? No. I, I, I said a dragon was what? A reptile. Dragons were reptiles. So I'm going to show you one of the reptiles today that is a dragon. Oh, I love this guy right here. It's called the Komodo dragon. Yes, it is. And, you know, for years, scientists said that they would see these, or captains in these old sailing ships would say that they would see these, not scientists, let me back up, it would be captains in these old sailing ships, would go around an island, and they said they'd, they'd see a dragon. They were scoffed at. People made fun of them. They said, oh, you're just, you're just storytelling us. We know there's no such thing as dragons. They were vindicated. They were proven to be right. Not that long ago, look at the date right up here, 1910. That about blows me away. That's not been that long ago. Didn't know this creature existed. And there's a dragon that's still alive with us today called the Komodo dragon. And you talk about a dragon. He weighs about 300 pounds. Pretty big critter. They can be 8 to, to 10 feet long. Talk about a dragon. Has, has a sharp pointed teeth in its mouth. Talk about a dragon. 
has dangerous bacteria. All that bacteria is very dangerous in his mouth. Talk about a dragon. And then they found out that it even has venom in his mouth. Talk about a dragon. He's got all the parts there of a, of a dragon. What a cool looking dragon this is. Hey, you know, if he's hungry, and let's say there's a, a deer going by or a wild pig, that dragon will come out and he'll attack that deer. And all he's got to do is just bite it really good and hard. He don't have to wrestle it. He don't have to kill it right then because that bacteria in his mouth will do that. And about a week later, then he takes his tongue out, this big old tongue right here, and his tongue's going in and out like this. And he, he's trying to, uh, to, uh, to find out where that animal died at. It can pick up scent molecules out of the air. Is that amazing what this tongue is amazing? Picking up scent molecules. I've tried that for years with my tongue. I can't pick up the first molecule, but this guy can. And when he finds out where it's died, then he'll, he'll go up to it, and then he'll start feeding on that deer or that wild pig or whatever he wants for lunch. And so I got a chance to feed one of these guys. I did. I was making one of my movies, and, um, and the zookeeper, we filmed this at a zoo, and the zookeeper says, Buddy Davis, I'm going to let you feed the Komodo dragon. Cool, I thought. He says, now, he says, I, I, I'm going to let you feed it a rabbit. He says, it's frozen rabbit. Rabbit's already dead. It's a frozen rabbit. We're going to put it on a long stick so it can't get to you. I don't want you to try to touch this dragon because that bacteria that's in his mouth, if it would snap at you and bite you, oh, you don't want that to happen, Mr. Davis. So you hold that rabbit on that stick. So I'm standing there. I'm so excited. I'm holding uh, that rabbit on a stick. I'm holding that stick out like that. And the cage is over there a little ways. He opens up the cage door of that dragon, and that dragon sees me. And his tongue going. And here he comes to me like this right here. Here I go like this right here. Anyway, he gets a hold of that rabbit, and he swallows that rabbit. I'll never forget getting to feed the Komodo dragon. I got to do that. Let me show you. What would you say, though, if you'd be a captain on one of those old sailing ships years ago, and you'd see a creature like this coming up to you, what would you call it? You'd call that a dragon, would you not? So that's what that dragon looked like when they opened up the cage door and he come at me. And uh, uh, it wasn't too bad when he looked like that, but I really got concerned when he looked like this. <laughs> and man, I tell you what, I was glad when he got that rabbit and I didn't have to feed him anymore. But there you go. If you'd see a creature like this here many years ago, what would you write in your logbook if you was the captain of an old sailing ship? What would you say that you'd just seen? You'd say that you've seen, you have just been able to witness a dragon, the Komodo dragon, a modern day dragon that's with us today. And I think they are so cool. Well, today we've been able to talk about dragons that would live on the land. Some of them, not all of them, could be what we call dinosaurs, some of them. Uh, some of them, the, the flying dragons would be what we call pterodactyls. And the swimming dragons would be things like we call chronosaurs or plesiosaurs or creatures like that. So the whole reason I like to do these talks, and I love telling boys and girls and moms and dads or anybody that will listen to me uh, uh, about God's amazing creatures that he has made. But the whole point that I like to do is to bring them to this, this decision right here. And the Bible says that we're all sinners. And you know what? That certainly includes me. I'm a sinner as lost as I can be. But a long time ago, I asked Jesus Christ, who is the creator, who made all animals, who made the dragons, who made the dinosaurs, who made you and me. He came to this earth and paid the price for my sins. Because God's so holy, can have no part of, can have no part of sin. He paid the price for my sins so that I could be in heaven one day with him forever. And I'll be able to go up some of these creatures and pet them. Might even be able to take a ride on the back of one of them. Boy. Wouldn't that be quite a trail ride? I bet you'd like to go with me on that trail ride. Maybe we get to do that. I don't know. I don't know. But it says it's going to be better than anything we can imagine. And, uh, uh, and I can imagine that. So uh, who knows? Who knows? But if you've not asked Jesus to forgive you your sins, you need to do that. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Isn't that wonderful or what? Right? That is pretty wonderful, pretty important. Make sure you're saved. Well, I want to tell you about some of the things that we have here. You can find me on Facebook, and you got to put in AIG Buddy Davis. We always have a scripture verse there every day, and we take pictures of a lot of animals and things that's around our farm where I live. I think you'd really enjoy getting on my Facebook page. 
And then I have a book out on a lot of my adventures. In fact, I tell the story of me getting to feed that dragon in, in this book right here. It's one of the stories that I was able to write about and many others, about 66 true life adventures that I've been able to be on. In my movies, some of you have probably watched some of my movies. We're really excited and have so much fun making these shows. And they're family shows that you can sit down and watch, and God gets the glory for creation. Isn't that important? And then I have a number of CDs that's out as well, and you can check out some of my CDs if you like. Some of our music we do, oh, I love to play my guitar and pick and sing and grin. We have a lot of fun writing songs and doing things like that as well. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed the program today because I certainly have had a lot of fun bringing it to you. Hope you join us again. See you next time. Bye.